What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In our previous video, we went over the details on how to install Betaflight on your Mac. And I'm sure most of you are surprised that it's relatively easy. Well, today we're going to continue with that theme by connecting your quadcopter to Betaflight on a Mac. You're going to see that it's super easy and it really only takes a couple of steps. Before we get started, I can't put enough emphasis on how important a good USB cable is. At least 98% of the time when somebody contacts me and says, Derek, I can't get my quad connected to my computer, what do I do? The solution is a different cable. Cables that you wanna stay away from are those cheap, colorful ones that you find at gas stations. They're usually about like eight or nine dollars a piece. Those are all garbage. You also want to stay away from any free cable that comes with a device. So that cable that you got with your cell phone, you don't want to use that to connect your quad to the computer. Even if you've been successful in the past, these cables have little teeny tiny wires in them and if you abuse the cable itself, it's very easy to break those wires inside the cable. So again, you say you can't connect, I'm going to say, have you tried a different cable? So what do you say with that out of the way? We get the old quad connected. Once we have Betaflight installed on our Mac, before we connect, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head up over here to the connection area in Betaflight. Right up here, this top line is going to show you available serial ports on your computer. If I click on that, the drop down is going to give us a list. And right now we can see that we have two items that are clearly involving Bluetooth. What we're going to want to do is make a mental note of the existing serial connections that we have up here in Betaflight. Because once we plug in our quadcopter, we're going to get additional items. So we're going to need to know which items were already here. Okay, so I see that I have these two Bluetooth items. Fair enough. I'm ready to plug in the quad. For today's example, I'm going to be using my 2020 freestyle build. And if you guys are interested, maybe I'll do a video on these. I feel that these particular builds are really the results of about my five year or so career. And I'm pretty happy with the decisions I made and the parts that I selected for these. But with that out of the way, I'm taking my high quality cable and I'm just going to insert it into my USB port. Once we've connected the flight controller or the quadcopter, we're going to go back here to our ports tab. And now we're going to see that we have a couple new items in here. Well, by default, the correct port is already selected. But how are you supposed to know which port is right? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Both of these are going to work just fine. It's really a matter of finding the difference here from when you've plugged in the quadcopter versus what was here to begin with. So even though this says USB modem, I'm just going to select it and I'm going to hit connect. And boom. Quadcopter connects exactly how you'd expect it to. I mean, it's literally that easy. We don't have to worry about any drivers. And honestly, when you guys are telling me you're installing the CPX drivers on a Mac, I'm really wondering what you're installing. Uh, more than likely, it's probably a virus uh, because Macs don't utilize drivers the way PCs do at least not typically. It doesn't mean that you may not have to install a software package in order to get certain devices to connect on your Mac, uh, but I'm telling you with a quadcopter, you do not need to install a single driver, either for the main driver for your basic connection to Betaflight or the DFU driver. And I'm actually gonna show you that example with putting this quad in a DFU mode right now. Another thing I wanna mention is this computer has never had a quad connected to it until this moment of me making this video. <laughs> it is a little bit of a leap of faith because you know sometimes things don't connect the way you expect and it's risky to record a video like this, uh, but I just, I really wanna make the example of how easy it is to connect your quad to your Mac. Okay, so we saw how to do the basic connection. Again, we just simply go to the serial ports and we make a note of the ports that are there to begin with, depending on what you have connected to your computer, or it's factory options, that list is gonna vary, but just know what you have to begin with because when you plug in the quadcopter, that list is gonna change. And just for the sake of argument real quick, I wanna show you what happens when I pick the other port. So see, here's our original port that was selected by default once we connected the flight controller. I'm just gonna click on the second one here. And as you can see, I connected right up just like normal, no big deal. I'm gonna plug my flight controller in again while pushing and holding down the button to manually put the FC into bootloader mode. 
Now, in most cases, you're not going to have to do this. I'm just doing this for the example. We can mostly put the flight controller in DFU from within beta flight, but I just want to show you that it is literally going to immediately pop up in DFU as soon as I make the connection. So pushing and holding the button, plugging in USB, boom, there's DFU mode. We can flash firmware, and that's really about all you're going to do when you're in DFU mode. Just an additional note, if you ever end up in DFU mode by accident and you don't want to be there, just simply remove the USB connector from the quad, plug it back in, and your connection is going to return to normal. Well, that's about it. It's super easy. I really can't make things any more difficult than that. For the most part, as long as you're using a quality cable, all you have to do is plug it into the quad and make sure you have the correct serial port selected before you try to connect. If you pick the wrong port because you're not sure and it doesn't connect, just simply pick a different one. Use process of elimination, making a note of what you had to begin with versus what you get when you plug in the quad, and it should be pretty simple. If you've gone through all that and it's not connecting, get a different cable. I don't care if you've used that cable in the past and you've been successful, Try a different cable, that's always the first step. If it's still not connecting, you could have problems with your computer. This type of issue is rare on a Mac, but because these problems can vary so much from computer to computer, that's really not something that I can get involved troubleshooting with. Well, that's it for today. That's all I got. Stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.